month away from the Big East Women's Basketball Tournament and February becoming oh so important. As inside Hinkle Fieldhouse, Butler off one of the most impressive January performances across the league welcomes Georgetown in a big Big East tilt. Hi everybody with Nick Gardner, I'm Will Haskett. Nick, two teams going in opposite directions at this stage of the Big East season. How about a 7-1 mark for Butler in the month of January, surviving overtime last week against Xavier. Have to keep momentum going if they're going to protect third place in the standings here tonight. Well, they really are, and the Butler's just done a great job of finding ways to win, Will. Kirk Ilevsky's done a great job with Christian Spolier and, and a bunch of other players who have stepped up. Georgetown, on the other hand, trying to find a way, a nine-game losing streak, maybe go small, find some things with a defensive zone and we'll see what the Hoyas have here tonight at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Yeah, the Hoyas been playing hurt. They've been sick. They lost nearly 80% of their scoring from a year ago. And right now, this is a team that really is looking for leadership, and they're hoping that they can find it from a couple of fifth-year seniors, Taylor Barnes being one of them, trying to step up here in the latter couple of weeks of the season. Yeah, Taylor Barnes, the Memphis grad transfer. She's the only Hoya in double figures, Will, averaging over 12 points a game, three rebounds, a really good foul shooter, and she's really got to be the leader offensively but defensively as – the Hoyas look to go small, being active in that zone, trying to create some offense for a team that has struggled to score at times. On the other side for Butler, you knew who their leader was going to be coming into this season. It was going to be the senior, Kristen Spolier. I don't think anybody expected the numbers, though, that she's been able to put she up. She has been superb, Will. You see it. Now, over 19 points a game, second in the Big East in scoring. She gets to the free throw line. She's fifth in the NCAA in made free throw attempts, a big reason why Butler gets there so often. She rebounds the basketball, coming off – a couple 25-point performances the last two wins for Butler. She's going to be the leader, but somebody else needs to step up for Kirk Godlewski's bunch as well. All right, Nick, let's take a look at the starting lineups in this one. First for the Hoyas of Georgetown, obviously riding a nine-game losing streak, but they've led in their last two contests as they try and find a combination that works Going into February, beyond Taylor Barnes, where do you think Coach James Howard needs to lean in this well, one? Well, I think he, he really needs to lean on marvelous Osagi Arisi. She's a great story, Will, and, and she's somebody who she does so much for this group with their mentality being uplifting and, and, and being able to weather the storm of what has been a really tough season thus far. On the other side for Butler, you mentioned it. Kristen Spolier can't carry all of the weight in this one. 22.4 points per game in her last five, but there have been many in this lineup that have been stepping up of late for Coach Kirk Gailevsky's squad. There's no doubt. Kat Strong has done it his times. Emo Ture has stepped up as a freshman and really had a great knack for the basketball. Shea Bry has come and been a, she, a great defender. She's added some offense as well, and it, it's been a lot of different players stepping up as the second option behind Kristen Spolier, and each night it's kind of been a different person, so we'll see who it can be tonight for the Bulldogs, but it's going to start with number 24 in white. There's no doubt about it. On paper, you obviously know what the records of these two teams are, but if there's any indication of what can happen any night in the Big East, you look just one week ago inside this building, a Xavier team that had won just twice on the season, took Butler to overtime, and the first beating between these two teams back on January the 12th, Butler had to hang on, gave up a lead late, won with a late Spolier free throw, just 47-46. to 46. Cannot take any opponent lightly in the Big East. Um, and much like Georgetown tonight, Xavier was really just looking for that spark. Can they get that one win to kind of get over the hump and set the tone for the finish of conference play? Butler will see its fill of a 2-3 zone from Georgetown throughout. They struggled to shoot the three in the first matchup between these two teams a few weeks ago, making just three of 24 from distance. Spolier with five on the clock. Had to heave it through. A good defensive challenge there from Brianna Jones, and up come the Hoyas. Well, it could be a tough matchup for Butler's off. Butler likes to play through the post a lot. They like to draw a lot of whistles and get to the charity stripe, and the zone can really help prevent those two areas. Quick trigger missed by Kovacikova. Can Georgetown make shots? That will be a big question. Ranked outside the top 330 teams in the country in field goal percentage on this season. Can't put the ball in the basket. It will be a long night. Cat Strong, that is not her range. Fading away from 17 feet. Ball last touched by Spolier. And Georgetown's defense holding on the first two possessions. And Coach Godlewski said, you know, a week off for Butler. They, they were able to rest, take some time off, work on their skill 
you know, just get some shots up a lot, but they, they, they really worked on, you know, how to attack that zone. They, they, they were expecting to see it throughout tonight. And again, it can be tough to get it into the post and to get to the line versus th that zone. That was the spark you were hoping to see from Osagi Eresi, missing wildly on that shot. Senior earning a scholarship in her final year. Spolier, quick trigger three, and the Bulldogs on the board first. Well, you said it best, Will. She can square up and let it fly quickly. She's, she's just such a tough cover because she's not just a shooter. She's not just a driver. She's a scorer in every sense of the word, and here's a turnover. Boy, Butler really thrives off creating those turnovers. Normally it's steals where they can get it and go the other way, but that's a reason why the dogs are such a stout defense. A bit unforced there from Georgetown. Parker, entry strong with a good seal. Nice up and under around Kalova. And it's 5-0 Butler. And those, that's exactly what Coach Godlewski was talking about, Will, about being able to reverse the ball, recognizing when there's a seal, and getting you know, the right angle to feed the post. Quick drive erased by Bry on the defense, but the ball kicked around. Long three missed by Jones, and the Hoya drought stretches beyond two minutes here to start the first quarter. When you said it, Spolier, you see there, talking with the young freshman, but Bry is just such a versatile defender. She's able to move her feet, use her length. Yumu Ture has come on and this freshman here for Butler. She controls out top, averaging nearly a double-double her last four games. Spolier, got Caleb in the air. Now Toure drives into the defense. Oh. Hoop and the harm as she shows the strength and a chance at a three-point play. Right on cue, Will. She's just solid all around. And you can see she sees the angle and is able to attack take that harm, put it off the window and in, and now she'll go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. She has really been good on the defensive end too, Will. Almost four steals a game of late. And that's really a point of emphasis defensively in creating turnovers for this Butler group. Kovacikova called for the foul. Started this offense, dribble handoff around the perimeter. That one gets poked away. Toure wanted the ball more, has Spolier up ahead, takes Pretty. it herself, and good patience by the freshman. It's a 10-0 spurt and a quick timeout by Georgetown. Oh, you're absolutely right, Will. Fantastic patience. So many times you see a two-on-one break, and, and the, the decision by the ball handler is just made too quickly. And you can see Toure able to kind of step through the defender, gets it to go, and the dogs with a quick start. You're watching Butler Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. We aren't just dreamers, we're doers. My time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time, none of you people yeah. can tell me to stop. Uh.
Four straight baskets by Butler. A quick early 10-0 spurt here on the Big East Digital Network. And we are one month away from postseason basketball here inside the Big East. In fact, one month from yesterday. And we will tip things off in the 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament. It's at Wintrust Arena. You don't want to miss it. Head to BigEast.com. Get your tickets. Call the number on your screen as well. A lot of seating to be determined. DePaul has looked unbelievable so far in this season. Offensive efficiency, defense as well. Butler maybe the surprise of the league in third right now, playing for some seeding coming up in that tournament, but still a lot to be decided there in the meet, the middle of this Big East women's basketball season. Settle down timeout for Georgetown, which has missed its first four shots from the field. Driving through the defense, and the first bucket belongs to Kovacikova. Yeah, the first time Georgetown has been able to get inside that Butler defense, Will, they... It settled for perimeter jump shots, a couple turnovers. Kovacikova able to get inside. Nice little step through and off the window and in. So then inspires defense on the opposite end. Good patience by Butler on this one. Strong, tough turnaround there with Jones defending and the ball last touched by Bry. Again, Butler will play through the post via Cat Strong. Shea Bry will post up. See Touré post up. And it, what they've done, Will, is they've done a great job of moving that ball from side to side and then looking to attack those gaps and not just keeping it on the perimeter. And, again, that's something Kirk Gileski really wanted to do was look into the post when it's there, get post touches, and, and run your offense from the inside out. Strong drive, eight to shoot. Kovacikova looking for five straight. Long rebound, though, Karams to Jones. Hoya's not in a hurry. Shot looked a little better off the hand of Osagi Eresi, but she stays over, and Parker trying to beat the zone down the floor. Well, you can see Butler. You mentioned the struggles for Georgetown shooting the basketball from the perimeter. Butler really trying to keep them on the perimeter and force them to make jump shots. Great interior passing by Bry. Parker is in a huge shooting slump of late missed, and now Bry will head to the free throw line as Kovacikova commits the foul from behind. Shea Bry, the senior from Altoona, Wisconsin, averages under five a game, but five rebounds, 2.2 assists, nearly two steals per game. For a starter to average so little in terms of points doesn't reflect how big of an impact she has on this team. Well, you're exactly right, Will. And she just makes winning plays. And oftentimes, those aren't registered in the stat sheet, but she's in good position. Uh, she doesn't get beat defensively. She's able to, to be physical and not foul and bail opponents out. And she's a versatile defender, too, for Kurt Godlewski. And you know, I think she and she and Ture have been, they kind of fill in the cracks a little bit, don't they? And, and where the, whatever's needed, they can step up and do things. Ture a little bit more on the perimeter, obviously. But you saw on that rebound, she's got a knack for the ball, and here's what Butler likes to do. They want to get active. They want to force turnovers. After the free throws, they're able to set up their pressure. Georgetown wasn't prepared for it. Bailed out momentarily by a held ball with the possession arrow staying. By the way, Kovacikova picked up her second on that last foul, so she heads to James Howard's bench. This one's thrown into nobody, but is able to be run down by Taylor Barnes. Barnes left open for a second. That's a big shot for... The grad transfer from Memphis, a 37% three-point shooter. Yeah, you know, if the Hoyers are going to be able to come into Hinkle Fieldhouse and win, they need their leading scorer to make some shots. So it's good to see her get on the board if you're the Hoyas. You know, we're almost 12 and a half a game for the Memphis transfer. A two-so. Nowhere to go off the double. Toure thought about the three. Denied. Four to shoot for Caceres, who just checked in, and she's bumped heading across. I think they'll get Cassandra Gordon with the foul. No, it'll be on Marvelous Osagi Aresi. You see late in the clock, Caceres, another versatile player, understood, trying to attack the elbow and kick out to a shooter, and it'll reset now for the Dogs.
three too strong from Toure. And the Hoya is trying to put together a little mini spurt. Jones just inside the line. And Spolier there rips down the board. Spolier not just a scorer, almost seven caroms a game for the senior. And when she rebounds it, she can get it up the floor quickly and transition to offense. She wanted the shot there. Wisely gave it up. And then Otuso with Noah really to go. Toure, good recognition. Got in the way of Barnes. Gets it right back from Spolier. Up and through and dragged her back foot. And she knew it. Yeah, it's and it's the second turnover by Butler. See the freshman just tried to hesitate a little bit but got a little antsy. Just shuffled those feet. And we'll show a little pressure here. Beaten up ahead. Barnes with numbers and makes yeah. her second three in transition. Well, that's picture perfect. Press breaker there, Will. A diagonal pass towards the sideline. Then you can attack. You have numbers on the backside. And you want to try to make Butler pay if they extend their defense as the Hoyas did there. And well, after a slow start, two possession game now. Spolier can't end the streak with the long rebound out to Atuso. Caceres. That one missed everything, but look <laughs> at right in the right spot. Yep. Yumu Toure cleans it up. That snaps a scoring drought of over two minutes for Butler. Well, that is what she has done time and time again for Kurt Godlewski. She She's just got a knack for the basketball. And whether it be in a scoring drought or breaking a run, she always seems to come up with those type of plays to get the dogs back on track. Game high, seven points. Third miss from the floor for the senior point guard. Long carry him out underneath. Caleb kicked it back. Barnes, a little bit of a heat check, and she has found a little something here on the first quarter. She has scored eight straight for the Hoyas, and it's just a four-point game again. Doesn't take much sometimes to get scores in rhythm. You can see after she made that first, she's really been hunting shots on the offensive end. Caceres short from the elbow. Hoyas pushing. Jones, wild drive, tried to initiate the contact. Trying to get that within a one possession game after the horrendous start for Georgetown. Sticking to it here, under two to play first quarter. Toure, nice lob, Bry patient, and immediately points to her freshman teammate for the good entry pass. That was really the first time it was created off of dribble penetration. A lot of times it, it had been a, a post feed to the elbow or the high post. That time Toure drew the attention and a beautiful touch pass and patience on the finish. Dangerous cross court pass. And that one just a fingertip, I believe, from Spolier slowed up that pass. Now in transition. And that one rattles out for a Tuso. Jones never really had possession of it, tried to get up court quickly. Tuso going to drive through and draw the contact. And that was just sloppy recognition by Georgetown when they had weathered the possession to just control it and turn it back the other way. Again, that's what... But, Butler's defense wants to do well. They want to get you sped up, get deflections, create turnovers, and there you see the foul. Again, Kristen Spolier had spotted up, so that allowed some space for a Tuso to work. So go to the charity stripe here with a minute seven to play in the first quarter. A 93% free throw shooter, and that's not the one you want to put online in a bonus situation. Butler led by as many as 10 here in this first quarter. And now build back out to an eight-point edge. Georgetown has been a notoriously slow starting team, both in the first and third quarters. They typically have been pretty sharp all season, despite a 4-18 and record in the second and fourth quarters. Trying to hang in there close. And look at the active hands by Caceres. Spolier, speed advantage. Couldn't make the layup. Here comes Jones. 
Got it right back with the pass too low for the 6-3 Kalova. You just see a little panic in the Hoyas yep. when they get something going. And sort of indicative of what this last month has been like for this staff and for this team. And you can see James Howard telling his crew to settle down. And look, that's what Butler's defense can do to you. They're so active. You're, they're, they're really aggressive with their hands and try to try to poke that basketball away. And in, in, in turn, you get sped up and you start turning it over. And look, it's not just the ball pressure and creating the steals. They want to speed you up, speed up your decision making to create an advantage too, and Butler's been able to do that. Parker, good setup to the top of the key, but Tuso has not had the range from distance in this one. Under 10 to go, Jones up ahead. Beautiful left hand, but too strong off a great find by Barnes. Tuso has to get it up quickly, does to beat the horn, and this one will go! Wildest shot of the first quarter by the junior. Lupe Atuso, and I guess the law of averages, the wildest one goes. Well, she did a great job of just being able to get to a spot to get it off, get it up, Will. And then she got the roll. Look at that, surrounded by Hoyas. The dog's up 11 going into the second. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. The Big East Way, the 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. A buzzer beating three by Butler. 7-0 spurt to end the first quarter. Their largest lead heading to the beginning of the second quarter. 21-10 here inside Hinkle Fieldhouse with Nick Gardner. I'm Will Haskett inside that Butler huddle. In his sixth season is head coach Kurt Godlewski, the reigning Big East Coach of the Year, drawing up the start to the second quarter and the way that January has gone for this program and given the prolific scoring and leadership that was lost off yep. of the team from a season ago, you almost have to wonder if it weren't for yep. one program north of here in Chicago that Godlewski could go back to back with this award given what he's done in a year where this team was picked to finish preseason seventh. A win tonight coupled with a Marquette loss. This could be a second place basketball team. It's really remarkable. Kirk Godlewski relied, you, you mentioned all the production that was lost, a very senior laden group. And to be able to, to build and, and continue to get better and started off 0-2 in Big East play. Will with two losses here at home, it's been fantastic. And you look at their schedule, Mark, or Will, excuse me, uh, you've got Georgetown. You've got an opportunity with some teams below you to to really make some things happen here in February to climb those rankings and stay in the top half of the top two or three. Yeah, first of four of the next six here at home for Butler. Fresh off the bench, Amelia Sexton poked that one away on the entry pass inside. And Atuso trying to extend the lead here for Butler to begin this second quarter. But Butler's defense, the active hands, have really begin, begun to affect Georgetown's offense. Beautiful up and under, strong, getting Tatiana Thompson in the air. 
And the run continues now, nine straight Butler points. And I think Kurt Godlewski, you can see why he was coach of the year. He's done a great job. Another miss from deep of, of emphasizing getting the ball into the post. That's not easy to do at times against his own. But Butler's had success, and they stayed with it here. Defense creating turnovers and then being patient on the offensive end. Offense running through the post of Caceres right now. Parker left open. You can see the hesitation to shoot. It's been a struggle of late and then a wild drive from the junior. There's kind of lost it going up. She's now four of her last 36 shots, dating back six-plus games. That pass overthrown. Georgetown turning it over for the eighth time. And it will be line change substitutions for both teams a minute and a half into the second quarter. Spolier back on the court, part of three Bulldogs to return. And the anchor in the middle of Georgetown's 2-3, Anita Kalova, 6-3 senior, also back on the floor for the Hoyas. Spolier was poked by Thompson. Didn't take kindly to that off the bench, and it'll be Butler's ball underneath. It's the first on the Hoyas here in the second quarter. Parker to the inbound. Haven't needed much of Kristen Spolier in this first half, just one of four from the floor. But one of five Bulldogs has already scored in this game. Bry, good outside shooter, missed from the corner. And now here comes the only real offensive threat for the Hoyas in Taylor Barnes. They just struggled on the dribble pickup there. It looked like she was going to pull from the elbow. She's hit a couple from that spot, just didn't handle it cleanly. Barnes is three of three from the floor. The rest of this team is one of 12. Make it one of 13 for the Hoyas on that miss underneath from Thompson. Well, that's one of those plays Shea Bry, she always makes, stays in front, stays vertical, and just forces a tough shot from Thompson. Wild drive from Toure. This has not been a smooth offensive start to the quarter for either team. Playing with two fouls, Kovacikova looking for help up top. Tiana Jones drives and misses. She thought she was hit on the wrist. Toure. Uh, Georgetown couldn't find anybody. Jones was still angry about the no call, didn't cover. Toure makes the three, and Butler's lead continues to swell. Well, you're right. Cat Strong was there. Just in the free throw lane, extended, ready to shoot it, too. Parker kicked it to the wing and another three for the dogs. And there's Barnes yet again. She is locked in offensively. Again, she has 11 of her team's 13 points. Four of the team's five made field goals. The rest of the team, one of 14 shooting it. She has not missed from the floor. Strong, quick reaction to get it over the 6-3 arms of Kalova. Touched by Butler, to be Georgetown last, will stay here. That one tipped out, last touched by the Hoyas. And Tayana Jones playing for the first time in two weeks. She was out with the flu bug last two games. In fact, that bug's still going around the team. Shania Wright unavailable in this one because of illness. Spolier driving and was still on the baseline and she made contact with that one. Looked like Kristen was a little surprised at how open. Usually she's seeking contact on those drives and able to balance herself, but that lane opened up a lot for her. Half court, Georgetown has just struggled to get good shots. Jones, wild fall away on the baseline. She comes up grimacing a bit. Spolier sensing an opportunity. Got away with a travel, but missed the shot anyway. 
Exploiter wide open. And another miss. Butler's shooting at just 33% in this game, but completely in control thanks to the intangibles, especially on the defensive end. Caleb, uh, well, that lid is still firmly across the rim for anybody not named Barnes for Georgetown. Beautiful transition, and Spolier misses a would-be layup. Now one of eight is Butler's leading scorer from the floor. I mean, she's had you know, some tough starts, but typically she's been able to get to the charity stripe to try and break up those those nights when she struggled shooting it early. Georgetown has not fouled her, though. Butler hasn't got to the strike only once for a team who has lived at the charity stripe in Big East play. Bit of a force there from Barnes, but you can't really blame her for Georgetown, the way that she started shooting the basketball. Five to shoot, took a while to initiate the offense. Toure driving, flips it up through okay. the defense and almost got it to go. And we'll head to the free throw line where Butler has not missed in five attempts so far tonight. And under five, it'll take us to a timeout. Butler in control. This one in the first half with Georgetown struggling on the offensive side. Bulldogs doubled up the Hoyas here in the second. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. Uh. You're watching Georgetown Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Georgetown trying to stay within shouting distance of Butler midway through the second quarter. They're there with the 13 points, thanks in large part and almost all part to Taylor Barnes, the fifth-year senior from Memphis, has had the stroke here inside Hinkle Fieldhouse, Nick Gardner. She has 11 of her team's 13 points, including three of four from deep. Yeah, she's been able to, to do it a lot off the bounce, too. You're seeing she's had to kind of create her own looks here in the half court, little ball screen there, and that's when she was in rhythm. But she is, she, she almost needs to be more aggressive. She gets her first breather of the night. Um, but Georgetown has just struggled in every aspect, and a lot of it, look, give Butler's defense credit. They've sped them up, they've created some turnovers, nine of them already for the Hoyas. And so Taylor Barnes has had to be the aggressor just to keep her team within somewhat of striking distance here as Toure misses the free throw. First miss at the line of the night for the Bulldogs. Toure has been the MVP for Butler to this point. She now has 11, matching Barnes with a game high. You know, Georgetown lost two, not just one, but two four-year All-Big East players from a season ago, Deanna White and Dorothy Adamako. Trying to replace that leadership this year has been certainly a challenge when you lose Combining that with Michaela Venson and a few others, we had nearly 80% of your team scoring not returning from the season ago. Very hard for head coach James Howard to replicate 
what those bucket getters gave him. Yep. It was another miss with Barnes still on the bench. Well, Deanna White, just the experience he's talked about, just trying to replace the experience, it's hard. There's there, there's no greater teacher than the reps out there, and, and sometimes you've got to learn on the fly and on the go, and that's been the case with the Hoyas this season. They've been shorthanded at times, as you talked about. So it's, it's been a difficult and a challenging one. There's Shea Bryer on the interior. That's the first time the dogs have really gone back to the post up. And she makes a nice move off the window, does the senior. Found space against Brianna Mayfield, who at 6'5". Full five inches taller than Bry. Somebody other than Barnes connects from distances. That's a welcome sign from Brianna Jones. And not only is it a, somebody else in a whole uniform, but it's from the perimeter. They're going to have to make some shots to try and space and spread out that Butler defense. It's just so tough getting to the paint right now for Georgetown. Tori had the speed advantage against Caleb, but elected not to use it. Instead, we'll pull up over her, and that was ill-advised, even with the shot clock winding down. Boy is trying to string together buckets. Jones free again. That is two good possessions from the other fifth-year senior captain in Brianna Jones. Here's the zone. It's been strictly zone defensively for the Hoyas. And Butler has struggled here recently in this game, shooting from the perimeter, so they've been able to keep it really compact. Bry took a real nasty spill off of Mayfield down low. Works it around, and Genesis Parker connects. That is a big bucket for more than just what it does on the scoreboard for her to get any sort of confidence back into that left hand. Well, you're spot on, Will. You just, she just needs to see it go through the hoop after going through a rough spell. A lot of contact there and no call on the other end. Now Parker, oh, look at the confidence, Nick, as she worked through the defense but had it blocked. Well, it's amazing as a player. Just what seeing one go through, you can feel like there's a lid on it for two weeks. And, boy, the relief to see it go down. She, again, kind of an inside-out look as Shea Bry finds Genesis Parker spotting up and all net. Good inbound yeah. look. And yeah. Cat Strong with the easy size advantage there. Puts Butler on top by 17. Jones trying to create. Spolier up tall. Doesn't have a numbers advantage here. Normally doesn't stop her. Tough one from Toure against the 6-5 Mayfield. He took a shot. One minute, one minute. Good give up there by Jones, but Kovacikova couldn't connect. Spolier showing the fitness. Another wild flip at it. She's now one of nine from the floor, Nick. If I would have told you at the beginning of the night that Butler would be up by 17 in the second quarter and Kristen Spolier would be one of nine from the floor, I'm not sure you would have believed that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There's a big reason why. Toure, the freshman, has been superb. Cat Strong has made shots. And we talked about somebody being kind of the secondary sco scorer for Spolier tonight. It's been... A bunch of different Bulldogs. There's the aggressive hands creating a turnover. Tenth turnover leads to Spolier against three players trying to spin away from it, and he gets called for a three-second violation. Three violation. I think she thought that it was at least a jump ball, and now finds out it's turnover for the Bulldogs, and that will allow Georgetown to hold for the final shot here in the half. Well, Kirk Godlewski really emphasized a few things for his team and they have been active with their hands and creating those turnovers and you know when they execute and, and hit certain objectives on the defensive end they've been able to have success as that record in January shows. Long three off the bench Barnes forcing it perhaps one to shoot we'll have another buzzer beater it won't get off in time Spoiler trying to find Sexton but you mentioned the identity of Butler turnovers defense and free throws they lead in all three of those categories in the first half and while it may not have been the best shooting half, it certainly works on the scoreboard for Butler in this one. Halftime here at Hinkle, 
Butler doubling up Georgetown here on the Big East Digital Network. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The Big East Conference and member schools champion excellence by embracing respect and diversity while striving for a culture of inclusion and equity. Be inclusive. Be inclusive. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Halftime at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Butler in command of this one 20 minutes into the contest with Nick Gardner. I'm Will Haskett. An important game for Butler as they continue to fight for seeding purposes in a month's time at the top of the Big East standings. And through this halfway mark of the Big East season as well here into February, you take a look at last week's accolades across the league. Really no surprise. You're going to see a blue demon almost every week at the top of the way that DePaul is going right now. Kelly Campbell. Just absolutely one of the best. And that assist to turnover ratio, Nick, is just, it's a thing to behold right now, nationally speaking. Yeah, it, it's remarkable, the style of play. And obviously, her second career triple double helped propel her to Player of the Week honors. And then you take a look at the honor roll from the past week. Kristen Spolier, who's gone for 25 in each of her last two contests, averaging 22.4 in her last five on the floor tonight in this one. And you know, it's been a really interesting year in terms of what Marquette had and then building back so quickly to be eight and three at this juncture of the season with a new coach, losing five starters from a season ago. You got DePaul who is right now if the tournament were to start with the 14th overall seed in the NCAA tournament. But the depth in the middle, Nick, I think has actually surprised some folks, including coaches around the league, in terms of how good that middle has become. Yeah, there's no doubt. Again, I think Butler's a prime example of that. You know, a lot of those teams in the middle lost a ton, and you expected maybe, you know, kind of a gap year, if you will, before they were able to rise to the occasion. But when you look at St. John, Seton Hall, Butler, obviously, they've been able to really do some damage here in Big East play, and it's setting up to be a heck of a finish in the league, and boy, it's February in conference play. You just never know, right? You got to go out and battle. It's a long season, and so this league is setting up to be a good one, and it'll be a good one up at Wintrust Arena. Well, earlier this week, we celebrated National Girls and Women in Sports Day. We've got a really cool feature about that around the Big East. We hope you can join us for that. Coming up more here at the half inside Hinkle Fieldhouse, Butler in control of this one halfway home. My greatest female influence in sports would be my older sister. She is a basketball player as well, and she plays at the collegiate level. And I also was able to always look up to her and admire her as a role model. She's faced a lot of adversity through the sport, so just having that connection with her has been really great. Serena Williams, um, she's opened up so many doors for women just in how she carries herself and like all the things that she has brought to her game in tennis, even endorsements and all the commercials and opportunities she's open for women. I think that would have to be Skylar Diggins. Just I love how um, she embodies herself as a woman and how she plays hard and she never steps down to anything. I really enjoy Sydney LaRue from the U.S. Women's National Team. I just actually watched her um, video series on her having a child and coming back from that. So I think just I like how she has pursued and be a great leader on her team as well as a mother. Natisha Heideman because just because we knew each other for however many years and seeing her go to the league is just amazing. 
Allison Felix and Serena Williams. Those women are just amazing in the things that they do. They just continue to pave the way for myself and as a basketball player, athletes such as Maya Moore, Della Don, because I kind of try to mimic their style of play. On, on the court and off the court, they're just great women to look up to. I really hope to be just like them one day and all their success and also give back to the sport that they've played in. We aren't just dreamers, we're doers. My time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time, none of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. Uh. Thirty-four seventeen, Butler at the half, trying to move to eight and three in this Big East season. Big East Fast Break is the weekly women's basketball show hosted by Megan Caffrey and Ashley Leotis, breaking down everything in Big East women's hoops. You can catch all new episodes of Fast Break during the season every Wednesday at three thirty p.m. on the Big East Twitter and YouTube pages. And on this week's episode, Megan was joined by the Fox Sports analyst Kim Adams to break down the state of the league. Big East teams are on the back half of conference play with March implications on the line as we welcome in Fox Sports analyst Kim Adams. Kim, let's start at the top of the league and look at DePaul. The Blue Demons lead the conference at 10-1 and one, and in Monday night's NCAA tournament projections of the top 16 seeds, the DePaul Blue Demons checked in at a 14 seed. What do you make of what the D Blue Demons have done so far this season? Well, I think anything that with DePaul and coach Doug Bruno, the word I always think of is consistency. So once again, DePaul has been consistent. Um, did they have that little slip up against Creighton? Yes, but I honestly think sometimes a loss like that can, can help a little bit when you're really rolling along and you're winning games. Um, they had been undefeated in the league before that Creighton loss. So I think that can almost help you recalibrate at time, but they just have so many weapons, obviously, all starting with Kelly Campbell, uh, this week's Big East Player of the Week after a, a triple double, um, but she's she's orchestrating everything. And then they just have so many scores. Um, Sonia Morris has made a big jump this year. Lexi Held, I think Lexi Held is a potential future Big East Player of the Year. Um, she's got probably the purest stroke, shooting stroke, I, maybe that I've ever seen across any level I've covered, um, WNBA, uh, men's college, women's college. Um, when you see her shoot, it's like, wow, that's a pure stroke. Um, so they just have so many guards. They don't have a ton of size, um, but they the way they play, they don't re really need to rely on any size. Um, the way they can just get up and down the floor, um, really get teams out of their comfort level. Um, once that press comes on and they're forcing turnovers, um, you can get a signature DePaul run where if you're playing them, you might be down two and then all of a sudden you look up and you're down 12. So again, I think that Creighton loss uh, may may have helped them. On the topic of tournament projections and Charlie Cream's latest bracketology, both of those teams were included. There were two of four teams that Charlie Cream has in there, DePaul, Creighton, Marquette, and St. John's. What does that say to the depth of the league this year? Absolutely. I mean, I think it would be great for the league to get four, maybe even five teams in. Um, I like that those four teams are in. I think maybe a fifth could sneak in as well. Um, I think Seton Hall could make some noise. I think they're going to have to do a lot of work for the rest of Big East play. Um, they've been a little bit inconsistent, but but with that, you have those four teams in. So when you're playing against those four teams, that's a big chance to boost your resume with a win. Um, so I think a team like Seton Hall just has to recognize 
those opportunities that are ahead of them and that it's not just impacting that one game, um, but their chances of getting into March Madness. How about a team that's maybe surprised you this season with where they're at right now in the conference standings? I think it's absolutely Marquette. That was a team who is second in the standings and was picked ninth in the preseason poll. Um, and you think about all that they lost, all five starters who had all averaged a thousand points or more. Um, Alizé blocked in 2000 points. So they just, they lost an incredible amount. So to think, and not to mention their head coach, Carolyn Keeger. Um, so to think about the job that coach Duffy has done in her first year is pretty incredible. As we're on the back half of conference play now, Kim, these games are all the more important. And you look at the standings and you've got Two teams at seven and four, St. John's and Seton Hall, and then another tie at six and five, Creighton and Villanova going into a really important weekend this upcoming weekend. What is what do these teams have to do to really get that win and be able to make a break away from these ties? Um, for what I've seen, a lot of these teams need to put together a full 40 minutes. Um, teams like St. John's, Seton Hall, who are currently sitting in fourth and fourth and fifth. This is a huge weekend for them. Um, welcoming in the top two teams, DePaul and Marquette, and it's going to be on their home floor. Um, Seton Hall, I've had them a bunch this year, and you see glimpses of greatness. You see glimpses of, wow, this could be the second best team in the league. This team could beat DePaul, I think. Um, but then there's games where they come out slow. Um, we saw that against St. John's in the all-access game. I saw that the other day against Villanova. They were able to come back in that one. Um, but against a team like DePaul and Marquette, you can't dig yourself into a hole. Joe Tartamella, St. John's, he's actually the opposite. He's talked about the importance of his team closing games. Um, so I think this is a time where you have to lock in on a full 40 minutes. Um, you can't give up. You can't get lazy for three minutes against DePaul or they'll go on a 14-2 run. Kim Adams, everybody, you can catch her at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Friday night as Marquette visits Seton Hall. And then again on Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern with Villanova at Butler. Kim, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome, Megan. I'll uh, see you around at some of the games, I'm sure. You're watching Butler Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. We aren't just dreamers, we're doers. My time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time, none of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. Getting set for the second half, but before we do so, here's a look at how we got to 34-17 through the game's first 20 minutes. Kristen Spolier, you're going to see the only shot she made in the first half. She was one of nine, including that three. She was easily matched by Taylor Barnes on the opposite side, but really the only offensive weapon for the Hoyas. She was four of six. The rest of the team was three of 23 in that first half, but then... Butler got clicking with a, a lot of different offensive options, Nick, in that first half of the seven, or I should say eight players that played for Butler. Six of them scored. Umu Torre leading the way with 11 points. Defense, free throws, limiting turnovers. It wasn't a pretty offensive first no. half, but it was effective. They, you're, you're exactly, and they just found a way, did Butler. And, uh, look, four made threes by four different players. Spoyer did make the one as we saw, but you're right. It was we thought it, you know for the most part Christian Spoyer 19 a game. She kind of makes things happen, and then everybody fills in, and somebody will step up on a given night. Tonight she has struggled. Omu Toure has been fantastic. She's made shots. Cat Strong has played through the post. 
Shea Bry has made shots. It's been everybody in that white uniform that has stepped up and made enough plays. But it really has all started with the defense, Will. Ten turnovers. They've really created havoc and made life really difficult on the Hoyas. Yeah, that plus six in the turnover advantage for Butler. Now off of turnovers, it hasn't led to a lot of offense for Butler in this one. Just eight to three, the advantage in points off turnovers. But they're getting to the free throw line. Yep. But on the other side, if you're Georgetown, you've got a big hole to dig yourself out of if you're James Howard and company. But while the shots aren't falling, defensively, you, you've done a pretty good job on Butler, especially when you look at Spolier's line in the first half. There's no doubt. Like he said, they, he would have absolutely taken Christian Spolier, one of nine from the field. I think turnovers is a big – just get those shots at the rim, yeah. right? They really hurt themselves by, by having some of those empty possessions and just not finding shots, getting sped up, and then try to keep the ball in the paint. Butler, 14 points in the paint. They were able to penetrate the zone, and that's what that zone is trying to keep everything – out on the perimeter, and there was middle part of that half. It was not as effective as the Hoyas would have liked. Good play design, but Barnes misses the first shot of the third quarter. Cat Strong at the defense. Didn't have enough on that turnaround shot. Somehow through the trees. <laughs> Spolier gets it and one. Well, that's what she does. Well, again, she's not a shooter. She's not necessarily a drive. She's just a scorer. She will find a way to score. And that time, she went and got the rebound in a crowd of Hoyas and shows her strength, able to fight through the contact. Just her first two-point field goal make of the night. And then where she is often being effective from the charity stripe, she completes a three-point play. Second leading scorer in the Big East begins this Second half away, she began the first. Three points on the board for Butler. It's a nice move. Wachakova just kind of stopped and popped. Defense flew by. That created the space. She's able to gather, get her feet set, and make the mid-range jumper. 20-point lead before that. Largest lead of the day for... The Bulldogs as Spolier comes up a couple of feet shy in that corner three. Kovacikova thought about it. She was limited to early fouls in the first half. Never could really get into much of a rhythm. Barnes. Good defensive recovery by the Bulldogs, but they leave Jones open on the backside. She runs down her own miss. Barnes set feet, and that's normally the result. Great time to find a shooter after an offensive rebound, and you said it a clean look for Barnes, and when she's gotten those, she has buried them here tonight. Coming off 22 points against St. John's in the last timeout. She's already up to 14 here early in the third quarter. Good recognition, yeah, great was. find. Parker over the top to Bry for the easy layup. And Coach Godlewski said they really worked on moving that ball, manipulating the defense, and still looking to feed in the post when you're able to create some gaps in the zone. No better example than that feed from Parker into Bry. Barnes knocked to the ground, didn't get the call. Kalova with the reset. Now Kovacikova drives. Kalova too strong on the baseline. Bolier got a little extra pep in the step to begin this third quarter. I think she recognized she could have done more effective offensively as Strong couldn't power through. She thought she was bumped on the elbow. Watch a good drive. Kalova right there for the layup as Bry got caught looking on the driver. Just excellent recognition, knowing the help was going to come and seeing that extra defender and then whipping that pass in there quickly. Georgetown a little more smooth and more in rhythm on the offensive end here in this third quarter. Strong got Kalova in the air, went right underneath her and scored. And the senior forward for Georgetown cursing herself down the floor knowing she was in the right spot defensively, but just gave it up well, for the head fake. The, the previous possession, Georgetown did a great job of staying solid. You forced kind of a fadeaway jump shot that time. Just get unsolid, create an angle. 
And you give up an easy two to Cat Strong. Here's another turnover with those active hands the dogs are showing defensively. Yeah, Bry poked it away after she was beat baseline. The first turnover of this quarter, though, for the Hoyas. Parker daring, dared to shoot and came up short. Quick pass, Kalova again, right yep. spot and a beautiful find as Osagi Eresi nails the pass for the assist. Kalova has just been running hard to the rim and making herself available. Being ready for those passes, and Butler's falling asleep a little bit defensively. She's gotten a couple easy ones on both sides of the rim inside. Well, she was open again, but Jones got it in the corner. Kalova liking that baseline, and now back-to-back -back buckets for the senior from Croatia. And the lead whittled down to 13. Hands crossed for Kurt Godlewski. He has not liked the lack of focus that he's seen from his team the last three or four minutes. And again, just last week in this building, they this was, it was a similar game against Xavier. Just got a little lackadaisical in the third and fourth quarters, and Xavier was able to force it to overtime, and Butler found a way to win. But Great Hoya defense. Osagi Eresi just ripping it away from Parker. Up ahead, and Kovacikova with the layup and a timeout called by Butler as they've seen their lead as many as 20 in this quarter. Down to 11, Kurt Godlewski has had enough. Hoyas showing good fight here midway through the third quarter. You're watching Georgetown Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. We aren't just dreamers, we're doers. My time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time, none of you people yeah. can tell me to stop. Uh. Georgetown showing life here in the third quarter. Have cut a 20-point deficit to 11. Four straight made baskets by the Hoyas. Three of them coming from senior Anita Kalova, the 6'3 senior from Zagreb, Croatia. Finding the soft spot right now in the Butler defense, Nick. He's doing a great job. You saw a couple of those off of dribble penetration. And then with that little mid-range, that's not an easy shot, right? It's kind of a tweener shot. She's able to find the open area. She's moved really well off of penetration from her guards. And playing in a game against a former teammate. There you see Nida Caceres, these two, via two completely interesting paths, one from Croatia, one from Spain, were teammates three years ago at Maine before both transferring to their present institution. Caceres with still one more year of eligibility, and Kalova, who's a member of the Croatian national team, in her final year playing for Georgetown, but were Contributors log pretty decent minutes in their one season together for Maine. You know the mascot for Maine? Bears? The Black Bears. The Black Bears, there we go. It was half right. And a three second violation against Butler turns it right back over to Georgetown with a chance to make this a single digit game. So many Bears as mascots around the country, but very rarely do you get 
a color distinction. So a, a few brown bears, type of some bear, polar right? bears. We'll continue grizzly to bears. Go to grizzly bears, without a doubt. It's so become more of a grizzly third quarter for Butler trying to protect an 11 point lead. is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Trust Arena. Get tickets now. The Big East Conference and member schools champion excellence by embracing respect and diversity while striving for a culture of inclusion and equity. Be inclusive. Be inclusive. You're watching Butler Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Butler led by as many as 20 here in the third quarter. A 9-0 spurt, including four straight field goals by Georgetown, six straight points. Butler has turned it over three times in the last two minutes. And now asking themselves some questions, Nick Gardner, here midway through the third quarter about what they need to do to close the door on Georgetown. Well, you're right. They've taken great care of the ball prior to this stretch. And look at the – you can see what Georgetown's – feeling much better and it's evident in the pep in their staff they're much more aggressive right now and you can tell Butler on their heels a little bit coming right out of the timeout they go right to Barnes who has been their go-to scorer this will be her first trip to the charity stripe fourth in the Big East in free throw shooting at 81 percent Barnes is a phenomenal story played at Memphis had a job all ready to go. She was done playing college basketball, and then with one year of eligibility left, said, you know what, I might try and get a fifth year, go play somewhere, and just was attracted to the master's program's opportunities at Georgetown, and then said, you know what, I might as well play ball while I expand my academic horizons. Gets a reset here on this possession, oh. but Caleb missed a wide open layup. The lead has been halved, though, here in the third quarter as Butler tries to find offensive rhythm. Let's see if Butler can go back inside. Really done a good job of playing inside out to get that 20-point lead. Tuso fouled. It'll be Osagi Aresi with the foul. That's her fourth. Did they call that? Yeah, they did get Osagi or Essie. That's her fourth. Spolier driving through yep. the defense, and Barnes took the call, took the contact for the offensive foul. Spolier was unable to find her footing. We're trying to get bodies out of the way. I don't think if there's any ill intent there, but yeah, they just kind of got tangled up, didn't they? Easy call for the officials to make. Solid crew tonight, I should add. Tip of the cap, we haven't even mentioned the officials. 3.47 to go in the third quarter. Cameron Inouye, Brian Brunette, 
top, Dana here. Georgetown trying to make it a single digit deficit. And Butler shows a little zone. Fresh off the bench. Three missed by Tayana Jones. Well, I think that's what Kurt Godlewski wanted. You know, Georgetown had been the aggressor. They've struggled to shoot at times, so go zone, try and keep that ball on the perimeter, and then the dog's able to go right back inside to Shea Bry for an easy two to break the drought. Can you see that ball movement really manipulated the zone and got it way spread out for an easy two for Bry. It's funny how it works and how it inspires quicker defensive play on the opposite end. Toure poked it away twice and controls the steal. Bry up ahead to Spolier. Hard contact and muscled it in around Caleba. They're barking at each other. Spolier with a chance for her second three-point play here of the quarter. Caleb, she is thought heated she was right thought now. She got that off arm into her, and she is. See on the break. Oh, that might be <laughs> something to look at. They have sent both teams to their benches as the officials look at it. But from the one angle that we showed, there is a case to be made. Not only was it initiated contact, but this gets up to the head, Nick. And in that situation, yep. you could see a flagrant on Kristen Spolier the way that they're looking at it. We'll see what they see, the same thing that we're seeing right now. But they're going to go take a look at this one. Caleb was all yeah, immediately Caleb, uh, upset. You're right. See that right arm from Spolier. Caleb, by the way, was called for a technical foul because of the chirping afterwards. I'd have to drag the rule book out here, Nick, too, is that if, if you deem that there was a flagrant from Spolier, I don't Do know you if you can, can you retroactively take away the bucket. I'm not sure if you can. That'll be interesting. You can see immediately Caleb went right into the face of Christian Spolier. This will be huge, though. I mean, look, this thing. Well, Georgetown had the basketball with a chance to make this a single-digit game, Will. And immediately Butler was able to respond. They get an easy one, then they get a turnover. You get Spolier going. So quite the change in turn of events here. I mean, both teams have obviously found something in the emotion, the sudden emotion of this game in the third quarter. And depending on how the referees view that, that contact right there well, you could impact the score and then the momentum of which team chooses to use it to their advantage. Well, on that elbow, it looked like it caught Caleb on the chin a little bit quickly and then kind of slid down near her shoulders. Now the officials have taken a look at it. They are huddled up at midcourt. The Hard tough one here, Nick, is because you've already called the foul on the defensive player. So even if you look at that and say, you know, it's probably an offensive foul, you have to then take it the next step to say it's a flagrant because yeah. there was head contact, yeah, which can't. I don't necessarily know you can see from that 100% yeah, definitively. It was very quick, right, if there was any contact. They are going to the coaches to explain things, and hopefully we'll get an explanation here. Kurt Godlewski doesn't seem to be too upset with the decision. Nick's going to get the full word here on what happened after they took a look at it. We're taking a look at another replay of it right here. And Spolier shooting the technicals. Nick, what'd you find so out? It, it was personal foul. Personal foul on the play, the technical foul on the play. They went and looked at it, saw nothing else. So just as it was called. Wow. I will say I'm yeah. a bit surprised by that finding, but nobody inside Hinkle Fieldhouse is going to be 
shedding any tears over that decision. Spolier makes one of two on the technical, and now one of three. One of three. Because there was the personal foul, and then the technical was assessed. So only one of three there for Christian Spolier, who again leads the Big East and made free throws, 121 coming into this game. Still a chance with a two or a three, or you could have yeah. a five or six point possession yeah. for Butler. And still leave points on the board on the <laughs> floor. That one long rebound out to Bry. Well, you have to really admire the fight of no Georgetown. Doubt. And and while you have to keep your head, the more you look at that replay, the more you understand the passion that Caleb was playing with as Caceres does indeed make it a five point trip. And that's a real gut punch, and you can almost say throat punch, literally, <laughs> to Georgetown on that trip down the floor. Again, the threat. Spolier struggled, but the threat of her flashing to that corner has opened up that left block for Bry to get some easy ones just by that player movement, even though she struggled shooting the basketball tonight. Long two rattles out for Brianna Jones, and here comes Spolier. I'd be careful if you're Kristen Spolier to go attack at the glass the rest of this game as this thing has certainly gotten a little bit more tense. One in the blink of an eye. Yeah, right it's back, back to, to a 17 point deficit for the Hoyas. Spolier, spot up three. And out with it comes Barnes. Kaleva threw it away. 14th Georgetown turnover. Caceres triggers that one finger on it by Jones. Kovachikova dumping it. Man. Jones driving through the defense and a blocking foul on Bry will send Brianna Jones to the line for two. So a nice skip pass, long closeout for the Butler defense, and Jones able to kind of a swooping drive across the lane with her left hand. And look, Bry is speaking to the official now. She was just kind of caught in a tough spot there in between, wasn't squared up to take the charge. There's contact on the ball handler. He really didn't do much, but that's going to draw a whistle every time. That was the interesting part. You could be totally set, but if yep. the contact comes on your hip, yep. nothing you can do, significantly right? Significantly less likely to get that call. As Jones, 67% free throw shooter, who's been struggling to score of late, has one of two. And really, it's, that, that's credit to Jones for understanding the situation and kind of forcing the issue by creating such contact where there had to be a whistle. Now let's see if see Georgetown, well, after it got down to 10 there, Mar or Will, they haven't been able to keep it out of the paint. They've been, it's gotten spread out a little bit. It's not really because of any makes from behind the arc. It's just been player movement and good design by the Butler offense, but any zone is in trouble if you get touches around that Big East logo, and that's absolutely been the case here this last two or three minutes for the Georgetown defense. Butler in the bonus as Caceres was fouled by her former main teammate, Anita Kaleva. And Kaleva now with those fouls, including the technical, has three as Caceres gets them both. And again, Butler led, built a 20-point lead early in this third quarter. And then that just interesting yep. sequence that ended in a five-point trip for Butler, including that Caleb a technical. Really stifened any rally from Georgetown here in the third. They're going to have to come from way back in the fourth quarter. Barnes thought about it. Great head fake. Jones looking for room to operate. Forced a wild shot as Strong held her ground. And Butler can hold for the final well, shot. In that run, Butler's defense was not nearly as active as we've seen at the last few trips. Active hands, active feet. They've just been the aggressor of the Bulldogs. Ellen Ross in for the first time was trying to find the post feed. It goes out off of the Bulldog. 4.2 to shoot for Georgetown. Jones. 
Butler will extend their pressure a little bit to make this tough. Barnes wanted to have something going towards yeah. the basket. She's got the heave from half court. He's got plenty on it. And ends with Georgetown seeing its deficit grow just a bit from halftime. Interesting third quarter, good seesaw back and forth. Even saw a little bad blood spilled, but it's an 18 point edge for Butler heading to the fourth. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. You're watching Butler Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Butler has never trailed in this game, have led by as many as 20. And any chance of a Georgetown rally erased a bit in the third quarter, but still 10 minutes to play. Here on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi with Nick Gardner. I'm Will Haskett. First of two home games for Butler this weekend. They will. Welcome Villanova coming up on Sunday afternoon, a game you can see on Fox Sports 2. A game at 3 o'clock to tip off on FS2. It's Butler with a win tonight. We go to 8-3 and three in the Big East, and pending results around the conference tonight would either be second or still solo third. Marquette in action. Sexton. Doing the dirty work. Six to shoot. Strong sees it, but a bit too strong. That time the Hoyas were out of the zone. They matched up. First time we've seen that tonight from Georgetown. It's been a zone the first three quarters. And they're going man-to-man -man here to start the fourth. Neither team shooting it well. Butler four of 19 from beyond the arc as strong is fouled. Georgetown, four of 16 from three-point range. Butler's had six more field goal attempts. That's really a big part of the difference in this one, the positive five turnover advantage. But really, when you look at it, Nick, it's, it's hard to translate an 18-point lead on the scoreboard. It's not as if Butler's come in here tonight and shot the, the roof off the building. No, you're right. You mentioned you know, six extra field goal attempts, five more makes. And then the charity strike. This has been a big difference, too. Butler, again, they play through the post. They tried to get the ball inside, and they've been able. Right now, they're plus eight from the charity strike, 10 of 14. Two misses by Strong. And, and Butler's usually at the line even more than they've been tonight, Will. They've just done a good job of the Hoyas. 
Trying to find shots for Cassandra Gordon. She's missed twice from distance. She's playing pretty well. In fact, she's seen her minutes increase the last couple of games. It's bodies all over the place for the Hoyas. They've lost a few of late to injury. Flu bug as well as that one oh. rattles out for Barnes. Well, you know, that's what Coach Howard said, you know. They just have not been able to find consistent shooting from anyone on the roster. And as good as Barnes has been, she's been inconsistent. And they maybe get looks. They take shots, but they're, they're just not doing so confidently. And, and in turn, you're not able to make them consistently. And that's been the case tonight. Caceres, wild turnaround. And then it's poked away from behind. Atuso drove through, but Caleb are there to disrupt. And Butler will wisely reset. Atuso attacked about four Georgetown defenders there. Butler's fortunate to get it back and then reset and slow things down. Cat strong in the post. Gets a double team this time. Rooks around Caleb, but again, a little bit soft on the turnaround. Still looking for our first bucket here of the fourth quarter. Won't get it from Brianna Jones. Boy, he's bad. A couple decent looks. Their last two have just rolled out. And a timeout called by Kurt Godlewski. Does not like the offensive rhythm. Had three subs waiting to come in. He'll be able to get him in now, and we will step aside with them. Still looking for our first points here in the fourth quarter, but Butler in command. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room, people, for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. Uh. You're watching Georgetown Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Butler seven and a half minutes from its eighth Big East win in what could be a really interesting night across the league. Butler is led by as many as 20 with Nick Gardner and Will Haskett, and there are some interesting scores around the league right now. Not that we encourage you to log away from this phenomenal production and not to mention the incredible information sharing that's coming from that's right. the two of us here. But there is some interesting basketball with four games all in action right now. Villanova and Xavier knotted up in a close one in Cincinnati. It's a three-point game with the Wildcats leading late as Spolier misses. DePaul is down 10 with seven and a half to go in the fourth quarter at St. John's as Taylor Barnes connects. And Marquette, which entered the night in solo second, just a half game ahead of Butler in the win column. They're down 10 at Seton Hall beginning of the fourth quarter. So if those results would hold, Butler would find itself in solo second with the win here tonight and would be just a game and a half out of first place. 
can St. John's close out DePaul. That's what I would like. DePaul, the way they play, they can wear on you. They can make up that deficit in a hurry, and it's hard to close those out. So that'll be an interesting one to watch. Back here at Hankel Torre. We'll go back to the charity stripe, and that's really where Butler has been able to settle things down here. And they've gotten the basketball inside. And even though they haven't made a ton of shots, they've certainly been able to keep the Hoyas at bay. Toure has a team high 12. I know you are the epitome of professionalism, Nick, but I see you've got an iPad over there. If you would like to tune in to that DePaul St. John's <laughs> contest here on the Big East Digital Network, I will not hold it against you. I can. Make sure that I cover here. you the rest of the way. Good step back, Gordon. Yeah. She's looked confident off the bench. She hasn't been able to connect. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. We talked about confident shooters and Coach Howard kind of trying to find it. Well, the, the last three jumpers for Georgetown have been shot confidently, and they've been all but a couple. The first couple rolled out. That one, as you said, was a confident move just off the back iron. Again, Georgetown out of the zone now. Matching up. They're switching some things, but. Four to shoot. Bry looking for Spolier. Couldn't find it. Caceres. Looked good off of her hand, but just lacked the distance. Well, and, and give Georgetown credit. They they went to, you know, they switched up defenses, and you can see the Bulldogs are a little off rhythm. They're not really getting clean looks at the rim. They've gotten to the charity stripe a couple times, but haven't taken full advantage, and. You know, conversely, Butler is showing zone defensively now as they have the last couple trips. Barnes will shoot over it. Every single one of her shots has looked good off the hand tonight. Spolier. Now Georgetown will match up. Butler has emptied most of its bench in this one. Sarah Humphreys on the floor for the Bulldogs. Caceres. Good recognition and control by Brianna Jones, but Bry came down with it, spun around. Possession will head the other way to Georgetown. Yeah, Bry in traffic there. She has met the floor hard a couple she, of times in this game tonight. She does that often. She just, she's always in there mixing it up. Boys get the tie up and another chance to cut into this lead. Jones may have been hit as she tried to get up with that one, but they'll say it was partially blocked and it will stay here with 12 to shoot. Just on body language and effort alone, Nick, if this was a six or seven point game, yep. if you're a Butler fan, you'd feel pretty nervous, but. The advantage on the board and the clock being in your favor certainly helps as Gordon finally connects for the three. Well, you're absolutely right, though, Will. On the lack of shot making prior to that one, just Georgetown has done everything but make the shots necessary. You're right, their energy defensively and body language just seems to be way more positive right now. Look how much more active they are on the defensive end. Toure, great defense by Kovacikova. Knocked it out with three on the shot clock. It'll be Bry to trigger it in for Butler. They lob over the top. Caceres, good set piece. And look at Bry come in, yep. read it, and get the offensive rebound. Ten points, five rebounds, an assist, and a couple of steals for Bry here tonight. And Butler just hasn't been able to score. Two and a half minute drought. That'll end it though as Caceres is able to spin towards the middle. Kind of split the trap there and get to the front of the rim. No look off from Kovacikova. Barnes. Another Shot in rhythm there from Brianna Jones, just a bit too strong. And again, Butler just small victories here. Get a bucket at one yeah. defensive stop, and this thing is getting closer and closer to the final. Well, they, they just they execute so well. 
and running their stuff and burning clock does Butler. It's really hard to come back on them. Even when you are making shots, and Georgetown has not been able to do that. Good pass from Spolier, or I should say from Bry, finding Humphrey driving through the lane, and that will send the senior to the line for a couple of free throws. And now that free throw disparity starts to show on the scoreboard a little bit more. Again, the Bulldogs have shot 13 more free throws than have the Hoyas tonight. They've made nine more than their opponent in what is a 16-point game. Sure doesn't feel like an 18-point spread type of game, but that's where we are with three and change to play here, fourth quarter. And Butler will stay in the zone and, again, continue to force Georgetown to make some perimeter jump shots. Man, a lot to like about Cassandra Gordon here no in the doubt. second half for Georgetown. Talk about confident shooter. She has come in and done just that for Coach Howard's group. Boyer and foul will be called against Kovacikova. Had her wrapped up from behind. That'll be the fourth on the That's sophomore. You can see with the body a little bit, got that left hand wrapped around as she tried to poke it away on the baseline side with the right hand, and that's what usually gets you whistled on plays like that. Set play, Sexton, normally a dead-eye three-point shooter, misses everything. By the way, four fouls now on three different Hoyas. Kovacikova, Kalova, and Osagi Eresi. And a Hoya turnover there. Strong, step back behind the line and drills the three. That has been a part of her game that has not been there. In fact, that is her first three-point make of the year. She was 0 of 14 prior to that one going through. Gordon again. Splash eight points now for the sophomore from Santa Barbara. She's averaging under eight a game her last three, but she's in her minutes swell in that span. And well, I'd keep the minutes up from the Hoyas for Gordon the way she's played here in the fourth. Well, there's no doubt, and that's what Coach Howard was talking about, still trying to search and find, you know, that group that can shoot consistently, that can play consistently. And she's playing her way into those. Minutes, there's no doubt about it. Strong, forced it, and it leads to a three-pointer. Kovacikova could get it, and Sexton battles for the rebound as we're under a minute. Butler's going to move to 8-3 and three in the Big East. Georgetown will fall to 1 of 11 as Bry puts an exclamation point on it. Kurt Godlewski just wants to bring in a couple of fresh bodies. There will be... No huddle as Jamelin Robinson and Ellen Ross come on. Bry and Toure get a worthy round of applause. It'll be 10 straight losses for Georgetown. They'll move to 4 and 19 on the season. And as I take a quick check at the scores around the Big East, Seton Hall's now up 14 midway through the fourth quarter against Marquette. So it looks as if Butler's going to move into solo second in the Big East. And DePaul has cut that deficit down to just four, under four to play at Karnaseka in New York City. Robinson missed the turnaround, under 10 seconds to go. And I think the Hoyas will be content to let this be the final. And that will be the case. 
Butler never trails. They go wire to wire in an 18-point victory. And the week off, maybe a little early offensive rust, but a patented Bulldog performance, Nick, in taking care of the little things to get their eighth victory in this Big East season. They did a great job forcing turnovers, active hands defensively, and really a great job of weathering the start. Look, Kristen Spoyer struggled offensively, uh, but Cat Strong was able to get things going, a more balanced attack for the Bulldogs here in their 18-point victory at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Just the third time this season Spolier doesn't score in double figures. It does not matter. Butler to 8-3 and three in the Big East with a 60-42 victory. We'll hear from one of the key Bulldogs right after this. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. Uh. Butler never trails, wins it 60-42, first of two inside Hinkle Fieldhouse this weekend, and with some results still pending, could be a second-place team going into Sunday. Joined by Shea Bry, uh, ice bath, I'm assuming, coming up afterwards, another tough one with the tumbles out. There was a physical game there, especially in the second half. Yeah, we definitely knew going into it that they were going to be super physical, um, just with, like, last game and stuff, and so I'm definitely sore right now. <laughs> The momentum that you guys had in January, you had the week off after a really tough battle in here last week. What was practice like? What was the week like? And then how did you guys get back into a quick rhythm in this game here tonight? Uh, Coach G just the whole week talked about um, being intense at practice. We've kind of been having on and off days at practice. And so the whole week we brought it. Um, having two days off after Xavier, I think, really helped us to recover our bodies and everything. And so just going into this, we just practiced hard the whole week. And we knew that if we practiced hard, we were going to have a good outcome. You knew you were going to see a lot of zone from Georgetown. You guys play through the post a lot. How do you think you, you were able to get the ball in there? What did you work on, and how do you think you executed that plan to get it inside? Yeah, the whole week um, we knew they were going to play a zone after last game, and we struggled with that um, last game. And so the whole week we worked on getting post touches, and if that was kicking it in and out or scoring it one-on-one, -on -one, um, that's just the whole thing we worked on the whole week on offense. Just the third time this season Kristen doesn't score in double figures. It didn't matter for this group. How is this team growing still at this stage of the season? Yeah, um, just with like Kristen, I mean, she does so many other things for our team besides scoring. You know, she shares the ball and everything. And I think playing as a team, we're all kind of connecting now, and that's been really big for us. Just we don't care who scores, just as long as we get the win. You know, it's looking like in New Jersey right now, there's going to be a result that's going to be very favorable for you guys. It could be a second place team going into Sunday. What is it like right now in that locker room? Um, we're going to be super <laughs> excited this week. We know we got another tough game on Sunday, though, with Villanova. Um, but just taking it one day at a time and being second place is awesome, but we got to maintain that. So, Congratulations. Great Thank win you. tonight. 12.7 rebounds for Shea Bry in the victory here tonight. Butler wins it going away 60-42 to to move to 8-3 and three in the Big East this year. And a big game coming up with Villanova on Sunday as this team will continue to protect its march up the standings in the Big East. Phenomenal victory. Butler never trails in this one, gets everything they need, and a good all-around effort in this one. For Nick Gardner and our entire crew, I'm Will Haskett. So long from Hinkle Fieldhouse. The Bulldogs move it to 8-3 on the season here on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. Yeah, 
My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you.